start. I know. What a way. Did you love it? Thank you for sharing this space with us at short, no short notice. Yeah. My voice is messed up at the moment, <laughs> but this is an important conversation and I did not want to miss it. So, so before we start, I want to acknowledge that we have this amazing opportunity to be on the lands of our colonizers. And it's an important issue that we are facing back home in our communities. And it's important that we are able to have this conversation today. And I'm so blessed to be joined by my brother and my sister from the Pacific. And I'll let them introduce themselves. So hey, how are we going? <laughs> so my name, as you heard, is Elias Reese. Back where I'm from, I'm Gamilaroi and Waramangu, two tribes. Very big, back where I'm from, we have over a thousand tribes. A thousand different languages that we speak. I work for a company called Beyond Empathy, and you, you know, we use the arts to influence young people. And by arts, I mean music, dance, painting, you name it. We do it. Myself was a participant from such a young age of 10 years old. And now, 27, three years now, I've been working for the company, getting paid work. I'm now, for two years now, I'm been on their board of directors, helping run the company as well, because now our company has over 50% First Nations people. And when I say First Nations people, I mean our people were the first people to be in Australia before colonisation. So it is very important for us to be able to share that and have such a big impact in our communities because by that, it means we have a say in our community. We now are the voice in our community because that's now our progression. So I want to introduce you. Well, no, she's going to introduce herself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Malolele, everyone. My name is Miyakami. Um, I am from the island of Tonga. I am from the South Pacific. If you don't know where Tonga is, think of Fiji, like the water. <laughs> We're near Fiji. Wow. And um, I am a storyteller. I'm an artist. I'm an activist. And um, it's a real privilege to be here with my two brothers from the region uh, because this is the first time that we've got an opportunity to tell our stories to you um, here at this summit. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, I guess I wanted to 
open us um, up our conversation today by asking Mia, especially as indigenous people, we have a long line of tradition, long line of cultures that has, I guess sort of in a way, before we had written um, history books, we recorded our history through stories, through telling stories that we pass on to our children and they pass it on from there. How are you using that as a way of promoting change in 2022? Thank you, Laval. Um, so like Laval says, our ancestors were always storytellers. Storytelling isn't a new thing for us. We've been, we've, we've been telling our stories, we've been hearing our stories from our families, our parents, our grandparents, and the way that they did that was they did it through art. That was through song, through dance. That dance that you saw would have incredible significance in Kiribati, where Tabo Tabo is from. The song that I'll be sharing later has incredible significance to my identity, who I am. And so I find that now the work that I do and what I try to do is I try to accomplish this form of storytelling through art. I try to tell our stories through song. Others try to tell their stories through dance because realistically all of us inherently at our core, we are all storytellers. Yeah. And art has such a beautiful way of connecting to people in a way that a lot of speeches doesn't. Because at the end, we are all artists, we are all storytellers, and we are all trying to reclaim our narratives and to tell our own yeah. stories with our own authentic voices. Because we're past the point where we're gonna let other people tell our stories for us, right? Yeah. Because we're reclaiming our narratives, that's why we're here. Yeah. And that's incredibly important because I guess for the longest time, we've never had control of our narrative. We've had people come into our homes, into our land, telling our stories for us. And I guess your cura curation is so subjective where you can spin a narrative any way you want. And so for the longest time, we've never had control of that. And mm -hmm. that's what we're doing now, reclaiming who we are and showing the world who we are. Exactly. Elias, do you have anything to add to that? God, she sums it up pretty well, I reckon, eh? <laughs> but, you know, she's right in the sense that we are storytellers. You know, my culture, the indigenous culture, First Nations of Australia, 75,000 years old. The longest, rec like, re longest recorded culture in the world. Longer than Egyptians, longer than Africans, like we are literally the oldest kind of, like, culture in the world. And the fact is, a lot of you people here didn't even know I existed, didn't know my people existed in that country. And that thing, like the fact that you don't know about it, means that you have no cultural awareness and that's not your fault. It's that the history books that have been written today have been written by the white man. And when I say white man, I mean the colonizers who come to us, my country, their country, our country, and taken over and literally taken everything that we had so dear and so precious to us and destroyed it. I've done that for me for 235 years. That's, 200, that's oppression right there being put down, being made to shame. Like, I, we, my people weren't allowed to talk their culture, our language. In Australia, we have over a thousand different tribes. When I say a thousand different tribes, each tribe speaks a different language. And you might be thinking, how do those tribes communicate? Well, we sign. So when I say we sign, I see a brother over there, I'm like, like that. That means, how you going? He might be like, all right. He might, pretty shit. You're not having a good day, all right? So that means you know you can go over there and help him out and try and make sure he's all right. So when we say we're storytellers, so many generations and so for so long, paint, dance, music, that's how we tell our stories and we pass it on to generation to generation. But how can we pass it on to generation to generation when our cultures, our tribes, our people have been oppressed for so long and told we are not allowed to talk our language, we are not allowed to do our dances and we are not allowed to be free. But guess what? It's 2022, baby. We have a voice now. We are our own people, and we are here to reclaim our voice and to tell everyone here, we matter. We are here today, and we are going to tell our stories and tell who we are. Yeah. That leads me to like another point. Like we're fairly new to being independent nations. 100%. Um, yeah. But we've been left with system, colonial systems that have, were never built for us they were put in place to always benefit the colonizers. Mm -hmm. And so we've been left with so much trauma that has been there for generation after generation after generation. How do we deal with that? Well, we can't. We have something that's called intergenerational trauma. And guess what? Everyone here in this room has experienced trauma. You know what I mean? Every culture in this world, every culture that's here in this room today, they have all experienced intergenerational trauma. And it's like our cultures, we experience that a whole lot more and it hurts and it pains us. 
But like I said, it's 2022, baby. We are now trying to find ways to benefit our, our, our people and our society and our cultures. And the thing is though, you can go out and go get a therapy from a white therapist, but they have no cultural awareness. So they can't tell us what we need to do or what we need to say. The only way we can do it is if we have a therapist who's been in our communities, because we don't come from privileged communities, I tell you that. We come from poor, low-income, disadvantaged communities, which means we have to try to find ways to create our own voices and create our own opinions and make sure the world here today knows we bloody exist. That is what we wanted to do today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Elias. Again, we're just bouncing off each other. It's really, <laughs> we're like saying the same things. Um, but no, it's, it's true. We've, we experience intergenerational trauma as a result mm. of colonization because the reality for us, uh, for example, in the Pacific, in Tonga, um, the colonizers basically came in and they were like, okay, here's a brand new system for you. You have no idea what we're doing. You have no idea how it works, but you gotta learn how to do it. We're not really gonna teach you how to do it properly, but you'll figure it out. And then they left. They left us behind. And they were like, oh, but you have to use this system while we're gone. Again, we're not gonna teach you, but that's yours now, figure it out. And then they left, and now we in the region are struggling to get past the point that allows us to be at the same level as other developed countries, as other countries take like- Take your seats, the final session is about to start. You better, yeah, you gotta take your seats, guys. Oh, well we've already started, so it's fine. Um, oh, he ruined my flow, I was, I was going somewhere. Anyway, so the point is they, enforced the system onto us, like Laval says, that wasn't made for us, and then they left it, and they said, figure it out, you'll get there. It's been so many years since the decolonization process, and we all know everyone that was, that's from a country that was colonized by a Western power can see that the decolonization process was incomplete. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone in this room that is from a country that was colonized can see that. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so what we have been left with is we have been left to struggle to face all of these problems that are the consequences of the actions of people that weren't even ours. Yeah. Yeah. Of people that came from outside and thought, yeah, let's just dump this on them and see how they go. And how are we going? We're, we're struggling with climate change. We're struggling with oceans. Our ocean health is in jeopardy. We're struggling to have proper democratic processes in our countries. And it's a result of a system that inherently was not made for us. And so the decolonization process has to continue. We can't just decolonize our political systems. We have to decolonize our minds. We have to, it's, that's how deeply entrenched it is. It's not a matter of our systems. Thank you. Because we think, we think colonially, our beauty standards fit the standard of the colonizers. Mm -hmm. The way that we speak to people, the way that we see people, the internalized racism that exists in my country, the internalized racism that exists in the Pacific, why are, we, why are we going against our own people? It's a result of the incomplete decolonization process. Mm -hmm. So what we need to start doing is we need to look further than just decolonizing political systems, decolonizing I don't know, schools and things like that. Of course, that's important, but it always starts from here. We need to start decolonizing mm -hmm. the mind to move forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important because I guess the world sees us, the Pacific, and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island communities as they always over exoticize yeah. our region. Yeah. The world sees the Pacific as Tahiti, Hawaii, people that fit their standards and they don't know that we exist. Mm -hmm. Like Papua New Guinea is one of the biggest islands in the Pacific. No one knows where I'm from. Tonga has so much to offer, no one knows where they're from. And it's, it's stressful, it's tiring. And this needs to change. Yeah. We're tired of being left out. We need room at the table. I guess what I want to ask now is for people that are not indigenous, that are not from our people, what can they take from this session? God, go back home. Let your people know we exist. We have an indigenous culture. It's so rare, so rich, so bloody freaking beautiful. Honest to God. Like, the great thing about today is that we have modern day technology. And so my, my people, we have something called a dream time, where is what has shaped our culture and our lands. But guess what? We don't tell the dream time just to our people now. We tell our dream time all over music, all over TV, television, movies, short films, 
books everywhere. It's so accessible for you guys to be able to just get in there and see how we live and how our culture is because there's so many movies that shows how many times we've been oppressed, how many times we've been put down. And guess what? We're here today as Indigenous people would never have this freaking opportunity ever, ever. That, for a second, I want you to think about that. As three young Indigenous people, would you ever think that we would have this chance? Think about it for a second, because that's, it would never happen. Yeah. That's the and that's the thing. We are now trying to create a voice for us and for our people, because that is what is important, because our heritage and our culture is what is important. And the world needs to know who we are and where we come from and what we do as traditions in our lands, because that is what is important. Okay. Yeah, do you have anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost for words. I have no voices all through. Um, man, do you have anything else to add? Um, I can say it. Uh, you can say something. Um, it's fine. We have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah. I mean, it's really important that we can be included in these conversations. Um, something that I noticed is that there are a lot of things happening here where indigenous people, where Pacific mm -hmm. Islanders, we should be at the center of the conversation. We should be leading the conversations. We shouldn't be on the sidelines like, oh, if you need an example of what's happening and why it's bad, let's pull up these guys to talk about mm -hmm. it. We're not a sob story anymore. Nope. We're resilient, yeah, we're, we're strong people. Token. We're yeah. tired of being the tokens. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's great that we get to be here and to talk to you and ex tell our stories, but what's important is that you understand that we need more of these for this to actually be productive because someone very um, important to me, they, they said that diversity without inclusivity is tokenism. So we need to be included Woo! constantly, not just once, constantly. So. That's it, I guess. Challenge what you know and what you think of our parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where you can start, baby steps. We don't expect change overnight, but we expect change moving forward. Yeah. That's the least that needs to happen. 100%. And with that, we're going to leave Mia. She's an amazing musician, and she will be performing something for us. Mia. Oh, yeah. I need a mic for the guitar. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, so this song that I'm sharing um, is a song that I wrote and uh, what better way for it to be a part of this panel, it's a song about storytelling and reclaiming our narratives and so this song is called Mana and for those that don't know what Mana means, Mana in our Pacific Islands it refers to our spirit, what, it's what everyone has within them so we call it our mana. Our mana is strong. Our mana is pure. Our mana is good. And so it's called mana, and I hope you like it. And again, thank you for taking the time to come and listen to us. It's been a privilege. It's been an honor. And we hope that you can take our stories with you and go and tell other people our stories, educate them on what's happening in our region. So malo apito. Thank you too much. And enjoy the rest of the summit. <laughs> Sorry, I did it wrong. Why do we accept definitions of how our people should be? Based off of written accounts of a man that looks nothing like me. He could speak our language, but not from his heart. When he wrote our history, he set us apart. Abandoned and bruised, left alone in the dark. But I won't let that past define who I am. When I listen closely, I hear my ancestors chant. Tell our stories. Redefine a past that was written for us before. Add a chapter, it's time to write a little more. Recast the future, it's time to let our story soar. Cause this is my mana, my spirit, my soul. This is me. This
This is my night, this is me When did a textbook determine what makes me who I am? Pages that say nothing of the blood that was shed The stolen resources and land For there is still so much that we have yet to learn Hidden in the archives that they couldn't burn It is rooted within us, look closely and you will see You will see, so tell our stories Redefine a past that was written for us before at a chapter, it's time to write a little more. Recast the future, it's time to let our story soar. This is my mana, my spirit, my soul. This is me. This is mana, this is me. This is mana. She spoke to the ocean and she sang with the trees She can be heard in the quiet whisper of the breeze She is everything I aspire to be She is Mona, she lives in me she spoke to the ocean and she sang with the trees She can be heard in the quiet whisper of the breeze She is everything I aspire to be She is mana, she is me So tell our stories Redefine a past that was written for us before Add a chapter, it's time to write a lot more Recast the future, it's time to let our stories soar This is my mana, my spirit, my soul This is me This is mana, this is me Cause I wanna bring power back to my people Wanna bring power back to my home Yes, I can bring power back to my people I can bring power back to my home I will bring mana back to my people I will bring mana back to my home Yes, I can bring mana back to my people I can bring mana back to the planet that I call home that's so funny. All right. Was that good? Or was that good? You can. You can tell. Like all of us, we have a passion and this is our culture. But i got one final thing before we go. In Australia, we've started saying this new slogan, right? Okay? I want you to repeat it after me because it's important for us. And it's important for everyone in this room to say it. And say it loud. So repeat, because bloody hell, I want the whole Manchester, the whole building. <laughs> tear the roof of this building when we say it, okay? So repeat after me. Always was. Always was. Always will be. Always will be. Aboriginal land. Aboriginal land. See, that is important. And you're probably wondering what this flag is. And I'm going to tell you, give you a little lesson, OK? The black is my people, who we are. The yellow is the sun. The red is the ground we walk on. And so this flag, right, was created in the early 90s. We've had it for so long, held it for so long. And it was only until just a couple of years ago recently that a couple from Australia bought the rights to our flag. And do you know what they did with that flag? They told us we are not allowed to use it. They told us 
that flag is nothing to you guys anymore. It is trash. You're not allowed to put it in your clothes. You're not allowed to put it in your flags. You're not allowed to scream to the rooftops about it. So for a whole year and a half, we had a protest called Free Our Flag. And guess what that white couple did? They pretty much crapped their pencils like, you know what, I stopped dealing with this hate, I'm stopped dealing with everything, this is your flag. And so finally, after a year, our whole flag has been freed because that is the impact of change that we had in our community and in our country. Because everyone in Australia, they know and understand that my brother and my sister here, whether they're from Pacific Islands, it doesn't matter where they're from, we're indigenous. And we need you all to go home, to tell you know, one young world to allow us to come here as an opening ceremony, to do our traditions, to do our dances, to do our songs, to have our traditions shown to the world. That is what we want. So please, go home. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone that we exist and that we are here. And we ain't going nowhere because guess what? We're just gonna get bigger and better from there. So thank yous. Do you still have anything to add? Tubble, tubble. Tubble, tubble. Uh, hey, hey. No, actually, yeah, this is our story that we are telling you. In the past, we were told by our friends. Now we are here to tell you and to invite you to come and help us with our own storytelling. We need you with climate change. We need you, we need you with everything. One young world. So for this, as you don't know, this is the first Indigenous panel from Young and World. The only one that happened this week. Do you want more? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. So spread the word. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.